muscle contraction. In this module, you will learn about the mechanism of muscle contraction. All our body movements such as walking and running are possible due to the presence of muscles inside the body. You already know that myofibril that is the simplest unit of muscle contains contractile proteins that help in the contraction of muscles and thus in body movements. The sliding filament theory is the most accepted theory which best explains how these proteins work to cause contraction of the muscles. The theory states that contraction of a muscle takes place by the sliding of the thin filaments over the thick filaments. Let us understand the steps given in the theory. The process of muscle contraction begins by a signal from the central nervous system CNS. The signal is brought by the motor neurons from the CNS. These motor neurons are connected to the muscle fibers. The motor neuron with which a muscle fiber connects is called a motor unit. The junction between the motor neuron and the sarcolemma of the muscle fiber is known as the neuromuscular junction or the motor end plate. This junction is actually a synapse, that is a small gap between the neuron and the muscle cell. The signals from the CNS are transported as electrical impulses, also known as action potential, across the synapse. A neural signal on reaching the neuromuscular junction releases a neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, thus generating an action potential in the sarcolemma. This action potential spreads through the muscle fiber and causes the release of calcium ions into the sarcoplasm from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This in turn increases the level of calcium ions in the sarcoplasm. The increased level of calcium ions leads to the binding of calcium with the subunit of troponin on the actin filaments. This interaction triggers a conformational change in the tropomyosin thus preventing it from masking the active sites for myosin present on the actin filaments, leaving them exposed. With the active sites of actin now exposed, the myosin heads start a binding process with actin, thus forming a cross bridge. The energy needed for the cross bridge formation comes from the hydrolysis of ATP attached to the myosin into ADP and inorganic phosphate. The attached actin filaments are therefore pulled towards the center of the A band bringing the Z lines closer to each other. This ultimately results in the shortening of the sarcomia that is basically the contraction of the muscle. You can clearly see that there is a reduction of I band during contraction while the A band remains of the same length. ADP and inorganic phosphate are released during the shortening, thus binding the myosin head to the actin tightly. The myosin remains attached to the actin until a new ATP molecule binds to the myosin head and the cross bridge is broken. The ATP is again hydrolyzed by the ATPase found on the myosin head and the cycle of the cross bridge formation and breakage is repeated causing further sliding. The cross bridge cycling sequence continues to repeat till the muscle fiber is excited by the signal from the CNS. As the signal stops, no further release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum occurs. This enables the pumping back of calcium ions from the sarcoplasm back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This pumping back of calcium ions results in the masking of active sites on the actin filaments. This in turn causes the return of Z lines back to their original position, that is relaxation. All the muscle fibers do not respond to the signal in the same interval of time, that is the reaction time. The interval between the signal and the beginning of a response is not constant in all the muscle fibers. The slow twitch muscle fiber contracts slowly and utilizes oxygen better. What makes it slow is the components present in it. 
First is the myoglobin protein. It is an iron oxygen binding protein found in muscle fibers. It is similar to the hemoglobin present in red blood cells. Myoglobin content is very high in slow twitch muscle fibers. Thus, these muscles are also called red fibers. The second component is mitochondria. These muscles also contain a large number of mitochondria which can use the oxygen stored in them for ATP production. These muscles therefore are also known as the aerobic muscles. For example, extensor muscle on the human back. The fast twitch muscle fibers on the other hand contract quickly and make use of the anaerobic metabolism. They generally contain fewer myoglobins thus are pale or whitish hence also known as white fibers the number of mitochondria are also few in them hence they have a low oxidative capacity that is the ability to use oxygen is low the amount of sarcoplasmic reticulum is high in white fibers for example the muscles of the eyeball let's recap the sliding filament theory is the most accepted theory which best explains the mechanism of muscle contraction. A motor neuron carries signal from the CNS to the muscle fiber which generates an action potential. The action potential causes the release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium ions bind to troponin on actin thus exposing the binding sites for myosin. The myosin heads bind to the actin, forming a cross bridge that pulls the actin filaments, causing them to slide over the myosin filaments, thus causing contraction. Once the motor neuron stops sending the signals, calcium ions are returned back to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This inactivates the actin, cross bridges are broken, and the muscles relax. Muscle fibers are classified as red muscle fibers and white muscle fibers depending on the amount of red colored myoglobin in them.